Hi everybody, in this video we are doing another watercolor and this was supposed to be for Watercolor Wednesday and I did have it um, filming but I wasn't able to uh, edit it because something happened but we're going to paint this perfume bottle and so we're going to do, this is basically, you know, doing a little bit of painting glass and I have all these, I have an obsession with perfume bottles and so I thought I would paint a few of them because I wanted to do a little bit more fashion. I've done so many um, flowers and a couple of portraits, so I thought I'd paint something else. Um, but the reason why I wasn't able to get this video up was because my website decided to become uh, attacked by <laughs> all sorts of morons. And so now my website is um, kind of down and I am in the middle of changing a bunch of things over, so ugh, I'm busy with that. So unfortunately, I didn't get, not only did I not get this up for Wednesday, but I don't have a Friday video for you guys, um, but I will be hopefully getting back to normal next week uh, with Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, hoping to post videos on those days. Um, so now, as you could see with the picture, the bottle is not like a symmetrical shape. It's not, it's just kind of like a rough cut um, with a whole bunch of different like random odd facets um, very pretty glass bottle um, with jewels so the name of the perfume was bejeweled so that's what those jewels are just around the top there around the neck of the bottle and so but it's a little bit odd painting or sketching especially drawing some of this because um, it's so odd shaped so I did try to get the shape similar um, I wanted so which what I wanted to do was paint or draw the main points the main faces and then kind of just add in lines wherever just to show that there was other lots of different um, cuts into the glass and so as long as you get the right the main points there then you can kind of add in whatever. I had a little bit of trouble with the top and I'm not actually happy with the top of the perfume, the, the lid. Um, but once we get there, you guys can tell me in the comments whether or not you agree with me about the top. Um, I don't like how it turned out, but I kind of maybe overworked it a little bit. But you'll see when we get to that part of the video. And so with painting glass and drawing glass, um, Try not to think of it as glass at first. Just try to see the lines. and Because if you kind of think of them as glass, then you're like, okay, well, this is glass, so it's see-through, so is this line. Like, it, your brain kind of starts playing tricks on you. And it definitely did for me, too. Um, so you've got to just really just kind of go back to the basics and just draw what you see and just focus on what you're looking at. And if you see a line, then you put that line in there. Um, this is probably not the best one to start with. Um, pick one, like a simple, um, a simple shape, like a like a square nail polish bottle or something like that, um, and not not necessarily a, a perfume bottle that has so many just random. And there's not like a, it's not a typical shape. So I did do some measuring with the picture on my iPad. And uh, I do actually have, like the picture is from my perfume bottle that I took, it's not from, you can, you can get pictures from online, definitely, I'm sure you could find one, but um, I just wanted to have my own personal f photograph that I could reference and um, just get some different light in there because I had some, I had some good lighting on my desk that I have already for, set up for videos, so I took a picture, I just brought it down and took a picture. And I thought it would be fun to paint the different colored jewels um, around there. And so now I'm just filling in the pink. I'm going to add, there's quite a bit of gray and even blacks, but for the blacks I did, I used um, Amethyst Genuine by Daniel Smith and Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. And both of those are amazing. They're, they're really cool granulating uh, colors from Daniel Smith. And then I used, for the pink, I actually used the rose from Prima. I think it's their Pastel Dreams watercolor palette. And I mixed it with a little bit of Wisteria from Daniel Smith. So I cooled down because the pink was actually kind of 
a little bit warm and this pink is, is quite cool toned so I added some purple in there and um, so when you start painting the glass the sketch of the glass um, you really have to kind of look at the colors because your brain is telling you that the perfume is pink like tinted pink and it is but then you have all these shadows from the surrounding area and then coming down through the lit through the top and then you have some silver and so you really have to try to figure out what the colors are because your brain is telling you well this color is this and like especially reflective colors but then when you look at it you're like no that's not that color at all like it's completely not that color and so it's weird what our brain tells us to do and i'm sure many of you have seen um years ago not that many years but a few years ago there was that dress where it was like it looked i can't remember it looked gold to some people and looked blue to some people i can't remember what it was um there's been a few things like that what were the two colors it wasn't gold it was blue and something and so lots of times um that can happen when we're painting and we think that it's going to look like this but we really have to just kind of turn that part of our brain off and just say okay what color is this actually and it does help to hold up um some different colors up to it or even like a color wheel and then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah that's not that color at all so that can really be helpful especially with painting glass um sometimes we have that trouble anyways when we're just painting like just an object that doesn't have any reflective surface or anything but especially when we're painting glass it can be really deceptive to get the right colors in there um, and then as far as getting those shades like some darker shades in there try to get the main ones um, and you definitely need them in there but then you can kind of just fake a little bit of those as well and just stick some in there and the more you do it the the better you'll get and you'll start seeing how to make it look like okay I, I want like a little edge showing there and you'll get better and better at at showing that and um it's this bottle is so weird because the the lid doesn't make sense the like the lid literally kind of slants up at the top once i started examining it i was like wait a minute this bottle because at first you just assume oh yeah this is a bottle and it's like kind of oval shape maybe a little teardrop shape and then i was looking at it and i was like it's completely odd like it goes way out on the left side and then it's like more rounded on the right side and yeah so um and then the jewels i noticed at first i didn't even realize that they were different colors um until i started really studying it and then i realized that the jewels on there are not all pink and kind of purpley tones and that they're more they're more um there's some green ones on there and some some orange ones on there some amber ones on there um and then with the with the shadows the grays oh yeah i used the gray from uh jane davenport's um her neutrals palette i think there's a gray in that one um it's from one of jane davenport's palettes i believe so that's the gray i used um and then i did i think i did go in with some black just a little tint of black um at the very end but i usually mostly used my black sketch um sketch pens and so with the with the gray um just just go in there and and if you if it needs to be darker especially because watercolor dries lighter so you might want to go in a few times and a few layers and get that darker and darker and it also gives your eyes time to rest from an area and go to another area because definitely with glass we do really need to take some time and i think i would have liked how the top had turned out better if i would have been able to just kind of take a break and gone back to look at it i would have been like oh you know what that actually looks fine but i just had kept focusing and focusing on it and so i overworked it and then um i didn't really i don't really like the end result um, but I do really like how the jewels turned out and how the bottle itself turned out. And um, I'm just going in with some white here, white paint pens. This, this Molotow pen is not working very well. So actually what I'm doing is just 
kind of splashing out some of those paint into drops on my paper and then I'm going and picking them up with a pen nib and doing it that way and it was way better. I have so many different paint pens and it just depends on whatever I'm using. I did have a gel pen there but it wasn't really working too well today and I wanted to get some really opaque white in there and lots of times with any paint pen especially with white and going on top of other colors you might have to do a few um, applications of it because it'll kind of sink into the paint and then you go in again and then go in again to get it to look really opaque um, and sometimes it just mostly takes on the color of whatever is underneath that so just so you're aware when you do use paint pens often you will have to do a few applications of it to get that really opaque white look and i'm also going in with a metallic silver uh, which i love the look of and you'll be able to see more close-up pictures at the end that i show and i i think i go in with some metallic uh purple and some copper for the jewels just because it gives that little shine and then when you see it in different um in different light and like from different angles it just catches the light really cool. And then the lid, um, the little band around the underneath the top there is just, I wanted it to look really uh, like chrome. And I don't, I don't know, I think I could have done a better job of that. So here I'm adding too much black. Like I just don't like how much black is in there. But what I was doing was I was getting too caught up on the photograph itself. And I should have just looked at the sketch and, and stopped referring at this point to the photograph. Um, I really needed to refer back to it when I sketched and when I first started painting it to get the different shades in there. But at this point, I'm beyond the sketch and I could, should just look at it and just be like, okay, what makes sense with how this, this sketch looks here, not with how the photograph looks. And I probably would have been able to do not, I probably wouldn't have added those dark, they're too dark on the top there. Maybe just gone in with um, some other pinks. Oh, I started actually adding some Potter's Pink and Minnesota Pipestone Genuine, or is it Pipestone? No, it's Minnesota Pipestone Genuine um, from Daniel Smith. Cause they were, uh, there are some warmer shades of pink in this, uh, in some of them and I started adding those in. Once you start studying it and you keep going over it, and I just went all over just to different areas. I didn't concentrate on the jewels at once and try to get all those finished and then go on to different ones. So here you can see, um, you can see a little bit of the metallic there, but yeah, you can see the top. So let me know in the comments if you, what you think of the top. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll definitely be doing some more of this. The next one, the next watercolor video is actually going to be of a person, of like a fashion illustration type sketch. So um, you could be looking for that, and that will be up um, next Wednesday, uh, which is Watercolor Wednesday. And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and give me a thumbs up, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.